interesting topic I wanted to discuss and kind of cover. I've been looking into a couple of different um, interesting articles. First, I want to give you guys a peek kind of where I'm at. This is the Apocalypse Now uh, Bar Cafe. This place is pretty sweet at night. Uh, you can see like they got it set up so they have like a, a DJ booth right here. Really, uh, really cool spot. They got some cool spots here on the beach. Um, you can see like there's uh, some surfing lessons going on here, which is pretty funny for some of the <laughs> some of the less coordinated people. If you want some entertainment, sitting out there and watching those guys is keep you laughing for hours. Um, so uh, with the state of cryptocurrency right now, uh, it's been causing a lot of emotional roller coasters. So this is just kind of an overview of just you know uh, last year. You know, we were close to a trillion market cap and uh, everything's really kind of been dropping, especially here recently. We, I think a lot of people were thinking, you know, there was a lot of stability at around, you know, the two, you know, 300 to $200 uh, billion dollar market cap. And then just everything just really collapsed. Uh, we've seen it come up a little bit, uh, zoom in kind of like the last seven days, really, really dropped, kind of bottomed out. Uh, oh, wow, 104, I didn't see how low it really went. And uh, it's recovered a little bit, if you want to call that a recovery. Um, but uh, I tell you what, like this is causing a lot of emotional stress, and um, I think that it's uh, it's an important topic. It's it's a serious topic. Um, I think that a lot of people deal with mental health issues um, to varying levels. Uh, I've had my own battles with uh, mental health issues, uh, not necessarily recently, but. Um, uh, a lot of my problems really stemmed from lack of sleep, and that can really uh, um, that can really affect you. Like there was a time where I just I couldn't shut my brain off, and uh, it was affecting my sleep. There was one time where I just you know I, I just I couldn't um, I couldn't sleep, and it was, it was literally driving me insane. Uh, and so um, at one point I needed to see a, a psychiatrist to get uh, some pretty strong sleeping pills to uh, just to kind of. Uh, just to, to just to shut me shut my mind off and um, that that worked for me um, I think that uh, there's there's so many different factors that can really play into mental health and it's it's not really something that you where you can really kind of look at any particular area uh, especially with a lot of the things that are going on in American culture it can get very very um, complex uh, in terms of how like I'm, I'm from Seattle, and the amount of mental health issues with people in that area is just off the charts, right? I mean, I um, it got to a point where I just, I really just wanted to get away, and uh, I, I, for me personally, it's been, it's been very re refreshing to be here in Asia, uh, where I don't, I feel like I don't have some of, um, some of the same kind of outside influences that are constantly around me that may impact me positively or negatively and I think that uh, um, everyone kind of maybe has their different co uh, strategies for coping with with mental illness um, this was the uh, Wikipedia if we want to just take like a, a really broad overview of like what exactly is a mental disorder I mean it can be used as like a negative stigma in a lot of ways but um, you know some of the some of the brightest people in the world have serious serious mental disorders and <laughs> was <laughs> found in the YouTube comments. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, you know, um, like there, there, there's been a lot of people. There's been a lot of people that uh, uh, were borderline genius. Like a lot of people say, like Einstein, like Albert Einstein had a mental disorder in a lot of ways. A lot of these people have very, very high IQs, very intelligent, bright people have had um, had varying levels of issues. Um, some of them can be like drug induced. So some, um, you know, I'm a very big advocate of ending the drug war uh, in the US but I, I feel like there's a lot of um, because of kind of the the way things have kind of happened like a lot of people want to like blame the drugs in a way for for certain things I really don't feel like that has uh, much to do with it so that, that that's kind of a can of worms but um, you know there's um, I thought it was kind of interesting like um, back I mean this is like 10 years ago when I when I had um, um, some issues and kind of it was really really fascinating for me working with uh, the psychiatrist that I that I had I was actually uh, um, 
uh, working with him, like I was actually a personal trainer at the time, so we had some really, um, some really interesting uh, um, uh, conversations. But uh, the way, if you're looking at it from just a purely, um, a purely um, um, scientific way, everything really comes down to what is known as the uh, uh, this this uh, manual. It's it's the DSM for I guess now it's in the in the fifth edition. So last last time I heard it was in the fourth edition. So the way that a lot of these classifications of mental disorders, behavioral disorders, um, you know, like you can look at uh, things like bipolar disorder. Um, you know, uh, you know, my my brother has uh, ADHD. Like he was just bouncing off the walls, like when when he was younger, and it was just, he was just out of control. Like I had to separate myself from my brother, or else I was just gonna I was gonna get into physical fights with him all the time. And I just um, it was uh, uh, it was interesting, you know, to see. I, I feel like some of that can be uh, misdiagnosed. So, for instance, like my brother, one of the reasons why he was bouncing off the walls and doing all this stuff is because he was just eating so much sugar. Like, I was even at that age. I was trying to eat a little bit healthier, but uh, I mean, he was, you know, he's eating ice cream. He's like eating candy, just like he didn't care, and uh, and he was just all over the place. And that can that can really cause a lot of ups and downs. Now when you look at it in terms of like crypto, it, it, you can kind of make a couple of different comparisons. Um, I, I put a, a, some interesting articles in the description below. This is one where a Scottish clinic is now treating cryptocurrency addiction. I thought this was kind of cool. Um, and uh, you know talking about their price swings, you know people susceptible to gambling addictions or obsessive compulsive disorders. Uh, in terms of like how you know people are like trading and kind of looking at some different things like this is um, I think it's an interesting topic but again like a lot of this stuff comes down to how it's classified in this manual or this guidebook and that is kind of the golden standard when it comes to identifying and classifying and categorizing uh, mental disorders and and behavioral disorders and based on some of those diagnoses from an accredited doctor you can you have the ability to to uh, to get prescriptions, uh, psychiatric drugs, um, some of those things. I'm not a very big advocate uh, of that. I'm um, very anti-pharmaceutical in a lot of ways. I feel like it should only be used in emergencies. Uh, but uh, they, they, I think that there is is a, a place for it. Uh, mental disorders can also be. Uh, uh, you, you see it sometimes with older people, like people that are getting really, really. Um, later in their stages, like some of the, there was a lot of, um, I've been kind of looking at like the whole George W. H. W. Bush, uh, I'm not a big fan of him because of him actually like starting the drug war, uh, his CIA, um, you know, connections, fueling the, um, the co crack cocaine uh, epidemic that uh, started in the country that really fueled the drug war. So I, I mean, there's a lot of things about that, uh, murdering uh, 10,000 Iraqis that were retreating in, um, uh, in the Gulf. Um, that was just a, a, a really just a catastrophic um, event for uh, humanity. I mean, just ripping the life out of uh, tens of thousands of people, um, you know. And so, like, that, that kind of gets things a little bit political, and I didn't really want to go in that direction. However, um, if you look into uh, some of the, the things that happened when it, was, when it was leading up to his death, there was a lot of people that were saying that he was, he was really starting to go loony, and he was having a lot of different... Uh, uh, kind of mental um, issues and disorders uh, leading up to his death, and um, I've seen that uh, from personal experience with uh, some people that I've had close to me that uh, were up there in age, and as they got you know, closer and closer to uh, you know passing, that uh, you, you saw that some of those issues really come out. Um, I think that uh, there's uh, a lot of there's a lot of sadness and depression right now in the cryptocurrency space, especially if you are over invested in uh, in in certain projects. There's been a lot of projects that have scammed out. Um, you know, there's been a lot of projects that have lost over 90% of their value. There's been a lot of a lot of the top altcoins have, have had that happen in, in the course of a year. And there's uh, a lot of different cycles to the cryptocurrency market. And I think a lot of people that are kind of new into the space are. Uh, still a little bit new to that. Uh, a lot of people that are very pro cryptocurrency are always optimistic, and it can cause a lot of negative um, 
emotions when the, the you know the market doesn't um, when the market tanks, right? You're uh, you're losing. Um, here's an article I thought. There's another one I put in the description below. Uh, kind of talking about. I mean, this is actually dated uh, a little bit, but uh, talking about some of the. Um, I guess just looking at this a little bit. Some of the things that are that are kind of looking at the dynamics of human behavior. Um, and some different aspects. I, I, you know, it's like again, like it, it, it's a, it's a serious topic, and I, I uh, yeah, it is super windy. I guess it's the wind. I guess the wind is really probably coming into the audio. sec and get out of the winds. Probably the audio is a lot better here. Grab my coconut. All right, yeah, this is better. Let me check on the chat a little bit. People are losing their shit because crypto is down while the rest of us are buying it up at discounted rates. Coin market cap is like a candy store for someone with ADHD. Mindfulness training, meditative practice is the way. Oracle is a genius. Does he have a mental illness? <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd call him a genius. I think he's a smart guy. Um, I think he does offer some value to the crypto space. There's uh, some things I disagree with him on, and I think there's, um, you know. <laughs> There's, there's some different ways of kind of, you know, looking at that, but uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to basically try to impose like uh, that any particular person in crypto has a, a mental disorder, um, even though that uh, I think that there is probably if, if, if you were to look at some of the general stereotypes of like people that have been looked at. So one, uh, Fake Satoshi, um, Craig Wright has been has been one. Um, Roger Ver, um, even though I like Roger Ver, I, I like what he's doing. I, I think sometimes he's a little bit out of line with some of the, some of his comments. Um, I uh, I think both of those guys. I still I still respect their opinions. Like in a lot of ways, I, I feel like those guys probably know more about crypto than I do. So I'm I'm gonna give them. Um, you know, respect. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. You know, they're. Um, they have a mental disorder, but these again, like there's there's some very bright people that have mental disorders, and, and you may have to work through that a little bit. You may have to have a little bit of an open mind to uh, maybe to 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 grasp some of um, some of the knowledge, some of the some of the great things that that some of these influencers and some of these uh, 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 people bring to the space. Um, I got I, I got a little bit upset. I, I got really upset actually uh, over the last I don't know 12 hours. I got into a conversation, um, but it looks like it, it might be a little bit more productive. Uh, he's willing to do a live stream with me, so I'll you know I'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, man, I, I just uh, I just had a, a very big disagreement with uh, the way this particular platform is doing some things, and they're open to uh, discussion. That's kind of the whole premise behind their platform. So. Um, I mean, I probably pointed out at least at least a dozen different points um, of disagreement that I had, and uh, I think having a little bit of healthy um, conversation when it comes to certain things is is, is good because uh, I think with with uh, with uh, the crypto space in particular, there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of personalities, there's a lot of like individuals as opposed to having like kind of like these big. Um, uh, companies in a way that are kind of dominating the space. A lot of people that have uh, some of the most respect in crypto are individuals. I thought this was really interesting. Um, I just subscribed to uh, Bitcoin Ben, and this was a really interesting video. Okay, so this was uh, 
Uh, this was Crypto Influencers Panel, not mine, right? So this is a live stream that he did about a month ago. And uh, it was a panel of YouTubers. The only guy that I recognize on here is Ken Bosak. And I, I like Ken Bosak. Uh, I think he's a really smart guy. Um, what he's doing here is, I would, I would look at this as uh, what's, what's referred to as peacocking. So peacocking is, is kind of the, um, kind of um, putting yourself out, like, I don't know how to, how to best describe this. So like, Pete, like if, you're, if, you, if you're wanting to bring attention to yourself, um, one of the ways is to kind of wear things that, that, that are gonna bring attention to yourself, whether it's positive or negative. Um, there's, there's, there's a way of kind of looking at, at that, but I thought it was kind of interesting going into the comment section. So I always like looking at like controversial things and seeing what is the top comment. So this is a top, top comment right here. Let's say you have never heard of crypto and someone puts you in front of a panel that looks like this mob and tells you that these are influencers, then suggests that you invest. <laughs> you know, what the fuck, right? So I think that's, um, I, I think that's kind of an interesting way of putting it. Like there was a, a lot of, uh, a lot of controversy behind, uh, I think it was like the, I want to say it was like coin, the Coindesk cruise that, that really brought in a lot of very prominent crypto people in, into this uh, in, into this cruise, you had like, I think it was Tone Vase was debating Roger Ver. Um, there was a there was an element there where Jimmy Song just went off on um, on Roger Ver. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of disdain uh, for him uh, for, uh, from Jimmy Jimmy Song. Um, there's a lot of egos, a lot of people that were trying to prove they're right, and there was uh, some people that really were kind of looking at it from an objective standpoint that didn't have invested interest in, in either party, weren't really in crypto, we're just kind of there as, as reporters, right? And we're seeing a lot of issues and problems with the way uh, some of these major crypto people were uh, presenting themselves. And and, um, and I, I, just, I thought that was kind of interesting. Like if you, if you looked at the cruise as a whole, like they hired all of these really uh, beautiful women to come on the cruise like they gave them they gave people actually that were on the cruise like um, They had like this package that was in the rooms and it was like full of like um, I think it was like condoms and like I don't know what else was in there, but it was it was like It was kind of strange like the the stuff that was given to the people that were on this cruise it just kind of like it was um, I don't know like, I guess you could kind of look at the whole, that whole situation as like one giant mental illness. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know, there's a lot of different ways. Let me check on the chat a little bit. I'm not sure what this argument's going on between Matt and Think of Why. Oh, Ryan, Ryan's on here. More red candles, more illness. Yeah. Sounds like my topic party. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, women were really going along with, with that. I mean, I guess maybe if you have enough money, you want to pay for it. Um, you enjoying your traveling? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been good. Like, I mean, it's beautiful here. It was, um, I really like it here in Danae. Uh, I've been spending a little bit more time here. So I'm traveling around a little bit and uh, kind of settled here. Um, I'm gonna be doing a little bit more more traveling, um, you know, probably after the Lunar New Year. Uh, probably gonna kind of hang out here in, until then, and um, that's kind of part of like some of the things I'm trying to incorporate with with my message and kind of what I'm doing. It's basically showing how you can use cryptocurrency to kind of be a world traveler and travel around the world and uh, use live on cryptocurrency and use it as a means to uh, support yourself and and uh, bring awareness to crypto um, at least that's kind of that was kind of my my goal and my aim I think that uh, I mentioned I have a few different interests that I kind of want to pursue and 
and, and get into gaming, um, shorter videos that are a little bit more uh, uh, trendy, I guess, uh, and kind of tied into music. Um, so I'm kind of, I kind of want to move a little bit in that direction, but right now just kind of enjoying enjoying traveling around. What was Jester's arbitrage and profit percent? I don't know. Uh, I don't have that up. Somewhere around 0.7%. It's pretty, pretty average. But, um, so that was about, about all I had today. I mean, there's, this is, um, there's some different, like, tips and tricks. Uh, there was, uh, for feeling better, I, th I I think one of the one of the best ways to kind of deal with mental health is community, uh, is is kind of branching out and being around other people. Um, maybe even even if it's just a way to kind of uh, express how you're feeling, and having someone else kind of be there. I think one of the things that can be very difficult is when you're alone and you don't. I, I think that's one of the things I've noticed about like, when I was back in in the states. And I was really, really into crypto and the other people around me, you know, some of my traditional friends or some of the people, like, they just didn't want to talk about crypto. They like, and that's all that was on my mind. That's all I really wanted to talk about. I kept bringing it up and up and, and people didn't want to talk about it. And so that I ended up actually just um, really trying to find a new, new set of friends. Uh, it's here in Vietnam and, and with my travels, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to kind of branch out and find people that are kind of a little bit more focused and dedicated into crypto. And that, that tend, has kind of become my new circle of friends. Uh, my live streams are a great way to interact with my audience, uh, to get feedback, uh, to have a little bit of converse, like, conversations in fluent English, um, as opposed to everything here is kind of more broken English. Um, so uh, it's rare that I meet someone here that is fluent in English, and um, and even then sometimes I don't really want to I don't really want to hang out with them too much because they're a little bit uh, just like I kind of explain what I do in, in my world and it's just like way over their head, right? And so, um, but uh, yeah, there's it's a lot of the Westerners here, or like I guess if you want to look at it as like white people, are they're more Russian. European, Australian, um, so, uh, and there's, I guess there's a little bit more of the touristy expat group in resort destinations, um, like Da Nang, uh, like some of the few places I've been, the Trang, which was the last city that I was in, um, so, but, uh, I'm gonna go check out um, that in the distance right there. Is this uh, really cool statue, Buddha statue that kind of overlooks this entire bay? Uh, the other thing that uh, is kind of cool is they have, they have a lot of fishermen out here on the beach, so I always go and run in the morning. It's kind of been my morning routine to go for a little bit of a run, and they've got people fishing out here. See some of the, uh, the surfers out here. So, all right, guys. Um, let me know what your thoughts. Let me know uh, what you think. Um, you can leave uh, some comments in the description below. And uh, uh, if you like these types of videos, let me know. Uh, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.